we are now finishing up our 10 part series on the airspeed velocity of a laden swallow. Oh wait, no, that wasn't it, what was it? Oh yes, the top 10 types of silver I, me, moi, like to stack. And Jack, you won't go back <laughs> after you smoke this crack. Yes. So, what precisely were we talking about? Let me drop the foolish accent. Let's really talk here, guys. Let's really talk. So, this is my most preferred. So, really, my list... I did it in reverse order. This, if I have, if you had the same amount of silver on the table, right? And dollars to dollars, it's all the same. I'm buying this every time. Oh, wait, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, guys, I gotta get serious, huh? I shouldn't mess with you like that, should I? Right? Am I right? Right, guys? Am I? No? I'm not right? <laughs> oh, ain't I a clown? Yeah, 40%. Yeah, 40% uh, Kennedy has. That's the... <laughs> yeah, that's how I get all my silver. Wait, no. On a serious note, this is, this is how I do it. <laughs> Although I have, I actually have more, more love for war nickels now than I ever did. Um, you know, coming up because uh, they are the herpes of silver. But once I realized that as a fractional piece, they actually made really good sense as a something smaller than a dime for exchange, as far as silver weight. And, you know, they quit making half dimes a long time ago. Uh, war nickels actually aren't that bad. And I keep saying that, but hopefully some of y'all will catch on. No. <laughs> These, this is the stuff we need right here. Right here. 90%. But the category, number one, is U.S. constitutional or junk silver. That's the one, guys. Uh, surprise, surprise, right? What a shocker. This stuff has everything you want in the silver, except the only downside I can think of is uh, you wouldn't want to use this for medicinal purposes, right? You would not want to stick this into your anode and cathode and uh, in your water and make uh, yeah um, anything with it at all because... Well, you're going to have a nasty, nasty time with that, right? So colloidal silver's out. Um, this stuff would have to be refined to be used for anything other than coinage, right? Because it is coinage silver at um, 90%. So let's talk about the basic forms this stuff comes in. Uh, we're not going to talk about numismatic pieces, and I'm setting the cutoff at barbers. <clears throat> so anything before barbers is automatically numismatic. Okay. Um, we're also not going to talk about commemoratives, because they're a separate category, which we did a video on. So none of these guys. We're not going to have these guys in the mix. All right. Although I can put... Yeah. There we go. All right put a price on that puppy because I know what I paid for it um so we'll start there barbers barber halves these are generally more worn and we'll start uh larger and work our way down uh dollars we're not counting dollars uh dollars count but they don't count in that the weights don't work for this stuff it's a dollar forty uh also the premiums on silver dollars are stupid uh if you want silver dollars, get the commemorative ones. Do not even bother. This is my advice. Unless you can get them, 
I would say this is my general rule. I already said this in the last video. If you have to pay over an ounce spot price for a silver dollar that's not in mint condition and really nice, if it's common day, I mean, you know, of course, if you can get a Carson City that's worn, yeah, okay, all right, pay something. But there's people out there paying $35 for a Cole Morgan from 1921, okay? No, that's not, don't, stop doing that. Don't do it. They're not, listen, they're not that freaking rare, okay? But we're not going to count silver dollars in this mix um, because, quite frankly, you're not going to get them anywhere near melt. Hell, you can't even get this stuff anywhere near melt anymore. So we're just going to concentrate on this stuff. You know silver dollars exist. Um, and in the case of what we're talking about, I would say that anything prior to a peace dollar other than the 21 Morgan doesn't count morgans are in the they're in the numismatic category let's face it you know we don't want to say that but it's true they're they're numismatic now they're uh you know the time where you could call a morgan dollar junk silver other than a 21 which is the herpes of morgans unless it's the cool one from denver with the print which wouldn't that be post mint damage anyway I'm, I'm going off on a tangent guys these are these this is what you can look for and the problem with barbers is, by the way, there's numismatic barbers, of course. The right date, in the right condition, of course. Uh, all these coins, uh, in the right date, in the right condition, you're going to pay a huge premium. But what we're talking about is well-circulated, not, you know, even slicks. That's constitutional silver. That's the stuff that you're stacking. That's the stuff that we're talking about, all right? This is from New Orleans Mint, 1907. See, look at this. While I'm doing this video, I'm actually... Uh, so, New Orleans Mint. There's a cool story. Doesn't exist anymore. There, in the story. <laughs> All right. And, uh, guys, these come in various states of wear. Uh, you'll, 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 if you see one in better condition than fine, it's probably a numismatic piece, honestly. These circulated so much. Yeah. Yeah. These circulated so much. You're going to you're gonna have a heck of a time finding anything that isn't, you know, isn't well, well worn on the barber stuff. It's, if it's not worn, it's numismatic, guys. That's what I'm going to tell you. Just straight up. If you get one that's not worn out and it's above fine condition, keep it. Keep it. Now, it didn't used to be that way, you know, 20, 30 years ago. I wasn't stacking, but I've heard people talk about it. It didn't used to be that way, but yeah, you better believe if you see any kind of junk or constitutional barber, it's going to look more like this than something fancy right here. Okay, that's one, barbers. Then we got the walkers. I already showed you a walker, but... uh might as well flex with one I paid four seventy five dollars for, right? <laughs> now, I actually paid the price that's on this for the coin because it was uh, from Monster Pawn. I remember I got some Mercs under melt the same day. Yeah. I don't know what U stands for, but... Um, anyway, 1946, the Walker. Now, your Walkers can be slicks, too. Here's a slick... Uh, if you see a walker that's above fine again, or very fine, let's say very fine for the walker. Something above very fine. So extra fine and up, you probably got a numismatic piece. You probably need to not, this has been polished to hell. But uh, yeah, there's a slick for you. Oh, this one's real slick. 1918S. <laughs> Dollar fifty-eight. I paid for that it's slick. Yeah. But I know the date and I know the mint mark, so it's not too terribly bad, is it? I got a twenty-three slick here, nineteen twenty-three S. But uh, you know these coins wore better than some of the other coins we're going to talk about. All right. Next up, we know already, right? Kennedy half, 64. 
only year they made them that were uh, 90%. And we're not talking about freaking 40%. Anything. So 64 Got that for $2.22. Nice. Okay, but good luck, guys. Uh, those days are over. Those days are over. All right. Oh, <laughs> I'm dumb. You guys are probably cussing at me right now. <laughs> I said next up was the Kennedys. No. Next up is the Franklin. <laughs> I'm silly. Uh, yeah, a lot of people forget the Franklin, don't they? Yeah. A lot of people forget the Franklin. I know what I paid for this because I get they all the blue staples give it away. Anyway, um, these Franklins actually they limited their run so they can make the um, the Kennedy. So Ben got kind of cheated. Yeah, I don't care for them. I do have a roll of them. So not all my silvers and flips, guys. I have rolls of stuff too uh, that I bought as a roll. Um, you know what? Is that? Yeah, so not everything's in a flip. The stuff that I get in a flip, I kind of put. I feel like this might be an error. Guys, look at this quarter. Tell me if those letters are seem up a little high on that planchette. I, I, I'm gonna double check here. I could be nuts, but now, uh, yeah, I think it's up high. Here we go. Uh, this is a 44 though, so it's not a fair comparison. But do you see that? Yeah, there's a couple millimeters definitely difference. Let me get another 64 we'll compare apples to apples. Uh, I did find I had a cracked die quarter that I found just messing around taking pictures. Yeah. I had a cracked die quarter. Um, eh, I don't know. I mean, it does. It looks a little high. Uh, it's a couple millimeters off. And I don't know if that's common or not. It's a thing. Yeah. Uh, we'll uh, we'll explore that later, guys. Uh, we got to keep, <laughs> keep on track here. Um, I'll keep that in mind, though. I'll uh, set that outside. We'll explore that later. Um, the Franklins are cool. Often had uh, cheaper than the others. Uh, even, the, even the freaking Kennedys now are getting pricey. And... Uh, yeah, that, it never used to be that way. Those were the days. Um, most of my um, stack of halves is actually walkers. For whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I do have... Uh, I went roll searching once and I found this. When I first started stacking, I went through, I think, $500 worth of halves to find this thing, though. And I realized, I, I calculated out my time, and yeah, we didn't do that ever again. Notice that I put the cost of that thing at $0.50. Cents. Now, why did I say that, rather than free? Well, because I paid $0.50 cents for it, didn't I? Right? Because I had to go to the bank and get the roll. That's 50 cents, guys. So now Coinstar is free. Coinstar is free. All right. That's our halves. That's all the halves that we're counting in this category. Other, You could count commemoratives, but I would, I would argue they're a different category. All right. Next up, we got to go to the quarters, right? Because that's the next denomination down. And we've already ruled out uh, dollars. Um, if you want, hell with it, we'll do it. So the only dollars I count as junk are these. And they come in the following mint marks. D, S, 
and no mint mark, which is this one, Philadelphia, All right? Okay, that's junk. And that one's not junk because it's nice. And the other junk coin are common dates, so 22 piece dollars. Uh, the common dates like this, I'm not going to, uh, we're not going to, but even then, these these have a premium, guys. It, 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 like I said, it's not even worth talking about them because you're not, you're not going to find them. You're not going to find them. And since we're doing 40% reveals, here's a stupid 40% um, Ike. And it comes in, there's two, two different uh, reverses. You got that uh, 76, and then you got the... Uh, the same reverse as the Susan B. Anthony, which is on every other year. These were only available in special mint packs, so don't get a bunch of Eisenhowers and get all excited. Because odds are, uh, first of all, it has to have an S, but not all S's are silver. All right? Real simple. Okay, moving right along. Um, quarters, wasn't it? Now, quarters is not going to include anything fancy so anything before a barber doesn't count okay so here's our barber quarter right and if your barber's in nice shape guess what it don't count a lot of them you get are gonna be like this very good getting close to slick town okay that. Sorry about your luck. That's what it is. But you know what coin's even worse? The Standing Liberty Quarter. Our next quarter in the line. Yep. This video is getting long, so I'm going to go faster, guys. Yep. The Standing Liberty Quarter. Now, there's two types. Type 1 and Type 2. Here's a Type 1. See how there's no, this is the real easy way to figure it out. See the stars under the eagle? See that there's no stars under that eagle? That's how you tell, okay? See the breast on the, the right breast? It's exposed. That's harder to see. There you go, guys. There you go. See, these things, they don't wear well. Uh, you get one in mint condition, it's gorgeous. I don't have one in mint condition, but boy, I'd love to have one. Here's one in, man, I don't have anything in nice condition. They just did, the high points were right where you touched the coin. And a lot of them, guys, a lot of them that you get in the junk bin are going to look like this. All you're going to be able to tell is the type. Now, the reverse is amazing. And not quite as bad as the obverse, but that's the downside. That's the kicker on these. Uh, next up, after that, we get into the Washington quarter, which again, I think I think the strike on this is off. I think uh, now I could be seeing things, but I think that strikes off. I think, uh, and here we go. Here's another 64, so we can go. See that? Yeah, that's... Look at that T. See that? I mean, that's clear as day, right? Can you, you guys can see that, right? I'm not making this up. Let me take this out of the container so I'm not imagining that. <laughs> I'm sure it's very common. Y'all are like, Josh, why are you even bothering with that? That's the most common thing in the world. Let's see if there's anything weird on the reverse. I don't know, 
guys. I don't see anything on the reverse that's weird. But that, look at that hopper. Do you see it? Right there. See that? All the letters on this are riding the rim. And all the letters here have a, about a two millimeter gap. Here, I'll show you closer to the normal. See that gap? There ain't no gap here. This They're riding the rim. The T, R, and Y are all riding the rim. And this is brilliant and circulated. Nice. So I don't know if that's worth anything, but I, uh, I'm i glad I saw it. I'm glad I saw it. Okay, anyway, yeah, that's definitely off. That is definitely off. And... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. When I put it back in the flip, it looked to me like the die was rotated, too. Yes, look at that. The eagle is pointing off to the 1 o'clock. See that? Oh, snap. We might actually have something here, guys. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a mint error. Yeah, that, that strike is off. Look. Watch this. See that? See the eagle? Heads orientated straight up. Actually, slightly off to the right. But, look at that eagle. It's still way left. See it? Yeah, we got, we got an error coin. That's an error. That's an error. All right, awesome. Hey, you guys tell me in the comments if you think I'm insane. But I, I think that's an error coin. Yeah. All right. So we were on, the, that's the Washington Quarter, guys. Um... Very nice, very lovely, yay, yay, yay. Um, you know, these, you can get these minty and proof-like. Oh, that is a proof. Yeah, so you can get a proof for $3.81. <laughs> if you get lucky enough. <laughs> yeah, that's a proof, man. Anyway, uh, dude... That's that tickled me pink, man. Cause look, yeah, that's an that's a miss strike. That this there is definitely something funky about this sixty four. That's awesome. I'll uh, look it up and see if there's an actual coin. Oh, here's a neat. I know I talk about it every chance I get, but forty percent uh, special set. The only forty percent quarter. I paid way too much for this, but by God, it's cool. Um, that would not count because that's uh, not 90%, so it doesn't meet our standard for this uh, video. But there is a coin that does. And they only came in special sets. But here they are, and this is our last quarter we'll talk about. Um, I, you can get these near melt. You can get these at melt. What did I pay for this one? five dollars and 31 cents and that was probably an expensive one honestly yep yep so uh you know uh that all the states 50 states i don't have all 50 but i bet i got 20 or 30 of them <laughs> let's go to 10 cent coins now 10 cent coins. We're not going to count cool stuff like seated or cap bust. We're going straight to barbers. And a lot of them are going to look like this. Now, what's our big advantage to uh, junk? I paid 250 for that. <laughs> that must have been way back when silver was like 30 something an ounce. Um, the big advantage to junk or constitutional silver is it's fractional uh one of my good buddies here online here he uh he says what's the point of dimes he said 
Well, I'll explain it like this with our coins that we just did. Yeah. So, item one. I want to go to the store. Johnny's Mart down the road. It's SH, uh, shit hit the fan scenario. SHTF, right? And I want to buy a candy bar. Okay? Now, candy bar equivalent value, we'll say is a dollar in today's money, right? Let's just say it's a dollar. Well, this is two dollars in today's money. So I could take this Merc Dime that I paid 98 cents for. And I could turn this into two candy bars. And if that's not fractional enough, right? Because that's that's kind of rough. I have to buy them two at a time. I can't get one candy bar. What if I want one candy bar? Well, if I was able to get... Now, this is where the... Um, this is where those uh, war nickels come in. If I got them cheap enough, because you can get those under melt. You know, uh, well, the problem with that is, is it's still worth more than that. Uh... I would go with the uh, some of those other fractionals like the tin ore from Sweden or something if they if the store would take it. But anyway, we're getting off the topic. We gotta get back on point. So the dime in question could be parlayed into goods and services. However, I can buy two candy bars with this or four candy bars. I'm sorry, the whole thing's silly. It should be four candy bars. I would not want to only have these, right? You see the problem here? This is four candy bars. Well, this is six more. So that's 10 candy bars, right? Well, who wants 10 candy bars? Wait, am I even doing that right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. 10 candy bars two candy or four candy bars well if I only want five candy bars do I cut this in half or do I take two of these and add a you know Swedish ore <laughs> all right um the system isn't perfect but you know the fiat system is what messed it up right guys now same problem with the half dollar I come in with my half dollar here I'm gonna have a big problem ain't I right because now I have to get 20 candy bars. 20 candy bars. If I come in with my silver dollar. All right. I come in there with this. Right here. This polished silver dollar. I am going to have a problem. Because I have to get 40 candy bars. 40 freaking candy bars. Actually more than that. Yeah, because the silver dollar has a little more silver in it, doesn't it? See the problem here? So maybe it's like 43 candy bars, 42 candy bars. There, That's a bit, pretty big problem to have. All right. So dimes. Uh, barbers. We got to get it going real quick here. Mercs. And Rosies. And you can find these in coin stars every now and again. All right. So the big advantage of these, they're fractional. The bigger advantage is they're cheap. And every once in a while, you'll find a mint error. All right, guys. There you go. Yay, we did the video. All right, that's our number one, my favorite type of silver to stack. Believe it or not, U.S. junk. This is uh, really something to get. Take care. Uh, like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the um, series. And share it with all your friends. And uh, yay, we got through the list. Bye-bye.